Hello guys, good afternoon. This is Professor Henderson. Uh, thank you again for tuning into my YouTube channel. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your cooperation and thank you so much for um, being a part of this family. Um, for my new subscriber, thank you so much for visiting this YouTube channel. So, as always, if you like these types of educational material and these types of content, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like and share these videos and drop your comments be below and give me a thumbs up. Um, so today's video is about medical abbreviations or medical terminologies that you may um, want to call it. So a lot of times I find that um, students are having difficulties like with medical terminologies. We are supposed to be um, using less medical terminologies in the medicine but um, I still often see medical terminologies are used in um, facilities so I just wanted to come here and um, create this um, short um, tutorial video on um, some few common medical terminologies that you may see so the first one we have here is NPO so NPO stands for nothing by mouth. So a lot of times when patients are going into surgery, um, the doctor may order a NPO, nothing by mouth, post midnight. Um, so that's what NPO stands for, nothing by mouth. So you shouldn't be eating or drinking anything. Um, the next one we have is ADLs. So ADL stands for activity activities of daily living and I have a little image here showing what are some of the activities of daily living such as um, dressing, toileting, eating, transferring and bathing. These are all considered activities of daily living and you can always find these terminologies um, on some types of uh, paperwork when you work in a hospital or a long-term care facility a lot of times they use ADLs so the next terminology we have is nasal cannula so nasal cannula it's a tube that is put into the nostril when someone can't breathe and you can administer oxygen through a nasal cannula so that's what nasal cannula stands for the next one is an NG tube or a nasogastric tube. NG stands for nasogastric tube. So a lot of times when patients are unable to eat, the doctor may insert an NG tube where it goes into the nostril and they can feed, feed the patient through this NG tube. Mm, the other one is a GT or a gastrotomy tube. So a gastrotomy tube is a tube that is placed into the stomach also to um, feed patients. So a lot of times when patients have, um, they are unable to eat by mouth because of the risk of aspiration and in order to um, promote their nutrition, the doctor may order a gastrotomy tube. They may insert a tube into their stomach and they may feed them directly through the stomach. That is what a GT stands for. So, let me see. We have another one here, say BM. So BM stands for bowel movements. So how many times your patient is having a bowel movement, you have to document that on your um, documentations. They had a bowel movement times one, times two, times three, the consistency of it, the color of it, and all of that good stuff. Ad lib stands for as desired, so patient may be getting up ad lib as desired. C O stands for complaints of, so if patients complaining of pain, patients complaining I have a headache, so that's what that abbreviation stands for. Let's look at the other one. 
we have one here, CVS. Now, this one stands for cardiovascular system. So we know the cardiovascular system is consists of what? The heart and all of that, right? We have another one here. O2 stands for oxygen. So a lot of times you see this abbreviation is used in, in um, long-term care facilities and also in the hospitals. So BRP. BRP stands for bathroom privileges. So um, bathroom privileges means that patient can... Um, they can get up and they can use the bathroom as ad lib. They can, you know, emulate to the bathroom so they have bathroom privileges. They could use the bathroom. The other one we have here is BPM. BPM stands for beats per minute. So what do you think you measure in beats per minute when you're checking a patient's um, pulse? you would record beats per minute. You're checking the um, apical pulse or you're checking their um, radial pulse, you will count it for a full 60 seconds, which is one minute, and that's measured in beats per minute. So you often see this use in, in facilities. The other one we have here is CBC. So CBC stands for complete blood count. That's when the doctor may order a complete blood count to check to see if you have anemia. And that consists of the um, red blood cells, RBCs, and, um, and, and WBCs white and red blood cells and it checks your hemoglobin it checks your hematocrit levels and all of that good stuff so um you often see this word use cbc complete blood count a lot of times when patients are complaining of dizziness and fatigue and the doctor may order a um a cbc a complete blood count to just ruled out anemia so guys, this is it for this video. I just have a few slides here on all the um, few of the most um, frequently used medical terminologies. So as always, if you like these types of videos and these types of content, um, please support this channel. It will help me out a lot. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Please consider liking these videos. Please consider um, dropping a comment below and let me know what you would like me to provide you with. Thank you so much for your um, patience and thank you so much for your cooperation. And I hope these videos can really make a difference. My goal is to um, help students, to transform students and help them to, um, you know, help them to be successful, help them to pass their home health aids, their CNAs, the the nursing exam so they can be um, contributing to society in a positive way. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your patience and um, please subscribe to this channel. I'll catch you on the other one. Bye for now.